This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by unbeaten super flyweight Connor Butler. Connor, how are you doing? I'm good, Dan. How are you? I'm very good, thanks. Um, as you know, you're one of our um, 2021 Their Year um, prospects. We, we picked 10 that we think are going to have a, a big year this year. Um, all under 25, yet to challenge for a title. Something that may change um, this year, especially for you, given the division you're in. And the comparative lack of depth, I suppose, or, or involvement at least in the UK. Um, you got out earlier this, uh, sorry, earlier in 2020, back in February. Must feel like an age ago now with everything that's happened since. Definitely, Dan. It's February the 28th. I think we boxed last. I boxed there, Brett Fardo, on a small old show, and um, it just seems like so long ago, to be honest. It was a great, it was a good win. I won on points, won comfortably, and it, after that, I was expecting things to just take off from there. But literally, we had a week off, then we were back in the gym, and then two weeks after that, we went into our first lockdown with this uh, COVID um, nineteen. That that was the first lockdown, wasn't it? Back then in March, was it or end of March, beginning of April? So it's almost been a year. Well, it has really in four weeks, less than four weeks. It's been a year. How have you managed to kind of stay focused and motivated with all this going on? Because you, you train and train and train, but there's no date, there's no light at the end of the tunnel, if you like. See, it's, uh, it's crazy because the sport that pro boxing is, when we fit, when I very first turned pro, I was lucky, lucky, lucky enough to um, be in a stable that I'm in with Paul Stevenson. And we had uh, Paul put on shows for us with uh, Black Fast Promotions with Pat Barry. And uh, what we got, we got what no other stable gets in the country. We got given dates at the start of the year. You said, listen, lads, you've got five fights this year. If we can make them happen with the ticket sales and all this. So we were very lucky in a sense where we'd get given our dates at the start of the year. So we'd know when we were fighting. So basically all we had to do is just go to gym, train, and, and then we were ready. We were out. But uh, Paul always used to say to us, it's not always been like, th like that. We have been very lucky with the setup that we have got, where we w was able to get them dates at the start of the year and we, we knew what was coming for the year. But with this COVID, I think it's just took everyone by surprise, to be honest, because as I said, I'm probably not the only one. There's probably hundreds and thousands or whatever people around the world boxing alone that has been affected, let alone the other sports and other businesses that people... And also, everyday people who have, who have lost their jobs and been made redundant because of this. So it's just um, it's just one of them things. You just got to, as 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 I say, you just got to suck it up. You got to stay ready and wait for them opportunities to come along. Is it hard as well to keep on the weight in case a short notice opportunity does pop up? Because you're at a lightweight anyway, um, and there will be some leeway, of course, in this current climate, and, and people won't be looking for you to make championship weight, but. Is it hard to stay on top of your nutrition with, with nothing in sight? Uh, not really. I'm I'm sort of lucky because I get my meals made for me by this uh, by by a person who, who I know. Um, master prep. He, he sort of anyone around Liverpool who wants to, to get on and help him out. He makes the best meals that that I've ever had that have been prepped for me. He's a uh, to be honest. I got a delivery there today as well. I got some meals for tomorrow on Tuesday, and then he delivers more on Wednesday for me. But He's, he's a Bosch fella, and when I've got him on my side, it's just make, making the weight easy. I, I never struggle to make weight anyway, I'm only a little fella, but with the, the way the year's been, I haven't really been sort of, I never really go too heavy anyway. I'm, I never really go heavy after a, after a fight. I've probably, I've probably put on weight. I'm not, I'm not at fight weight. I don't think no one is walking around, but listen, whatever weight I get, get made the fight at, I'll make comfortably. Especially with the with, with the nutrition side, the things that I, that I've got, I'm happy with it. So it doesn't doesn't make a difference to me. I, I've fought at different weights all my career so far. Been told to make a weight, and all of a sudden I have to put on a couple of pounds to fight. It it doesn't make no odds to me. I get in there at whatever whatever weight I'm I'm comfortable at. I'll fight at. I can make a three no problem. I can make flyweight no problem. <laughs> Now, we saw um, three of your good friends and gym mates appear on a Frank Warren show in July on BT Sport. Now, while I'm sure you were delighted for, for the three of them and they all performed very well, 
Were you a little bit envious? Were you watching thinking, I wish I would be on there on, the, on a big TV show? No, not at all, because them lads deserve the opportunity that, that they got. And um, you can see why, do you know what I mean? The performances that they put on. Uh, with myself, I'm, I'm waiting for an opportunity like that. And I've been told that it's coming this year. Uh, a bit, I, I, I wanted it to happen last year. It should have should have happened last year. Without, I reckon if that COVID-19 didn't happen, I reckon it would have been, I would have been on with them as well. But... It's just one of them things. I'm I'm not an envious person. I don't. I just focus on what I've got to do myself. And for them to go out and and get get more fights, they they got more fights like last year. And the way that they perform, you can see why they've been given them opportunities. And I'm sure them opportunities will be coming for me as well. And talking of opportunities, you've said you can make super flyweight and flyweight both comfortably. Have you got a preference? Uh, not really. I fought at eight stone three on my second fight as a pro. That's the lightest I've fought as a pro so far. Uh, I made the weight no problem, and I got a got a second round TKO against the unbeaten fighter on that one. And I know I'm strong at that weight, and I can I can handle myself at that weight. And as an amateur, I boxed at life forty nine kilo that I made comfortably as well. Um, I've never really struggled to make weight. For me, making weight it's it's a number you've got to hit. As soon as you hit that number, you can rehydrate and fuel up and then you're ready to go. If you do everything properly and you train hard, you don't cut no corners in diet and running, strength conditioning, you don't cut none of that out. You should you should make the weight. That's that's part of the game. If you can't make that weight, don't fight at it. That's the way I see it. So the thing is, like Box Rec have got you rated, I think, number seven in Britain. But then you look at the um, rankings and you've got Cal Fire, Charlie Edwards, Sonny Edwards. So when you take those kind of world-level fighters out of the equation, you're already top five after just five fights. So the next fight for you, ideally, or even if you have to have a rush shedder first, is going to be a, a big step up, I think. Uh, yeah, but at the end of the day, I'm sparring people in the gym that, that are seasoned fighters. And do you know what I mean? I've, 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 been, I've been fighting, I'd say, at, at a good level as an amateur as well. Yeah. I've boxed boxed all around the world more or less as an amateur so I've always fought against people who are good people who have been in the sport as long as I have and that's if you if you look at them like the, the likes of the top of the tree like the likes of Cal Yaffa and uh, Charlie Edwards and Sonny Edwards yeah they're they seem like they're a lot a lot ahead with like titles and things like that because they've been pro longer or whatever but in reality with in boxing sense that if you're looking at them people, you should be comparing yourself to them and thinking, I'm just as good as them. I want to be doing what they're doing. And with, with all good time and the right fights, that can happen. I'm confident in my own ability that I can be as good as them or up there with them in the next few years. Well, talking of the right fights, I've got a couple of ideas for you. So tell me what you think. Uh, Marcel Braithwaite. Yeah, I'd love to fight. I've seen I've seen a few performances of him against um, Sonny Edwards. It was a great fight. I, I, I like to watch it. He's a, he's a sound lad as well, fellow Scouser and all that. But at the same time, I'd I'd like that fight. It'd be a, be a good fight. And the one that really intrigues me, and it's more because from a trade perspective and knowing the history, so I'm not sure it'll have like massive crossover appeal or anything. Is Ryan Farrow? <laughs> Sorry, you went all funny then. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> I said the one that really intrigues me, and more from a trade perspective than anything else, is Ryan Farag. Yeah, to be honest, I was I was speaking about this the other day. Um, I grew up sparring Ryan since I was a kid. Yeah, got a lot of respect for him. I like him. He's a boss lad, and uh, he fought Sonny Edwards as well on a. I can't remember when it was. It went long ago though. He fought him, and it was a, it was a proper good fight. And there's a bit of needle in that one as well. Yeah. I think he remember it, yeah. But he's he's a boss lad, Ryan, and I'd I'd like that fight. You know what I mean? It's not up to me who makes the fight. I'll fight anyone at the end of the day. That's that's your job. You you're out there to fight whoever's in front of you. So whoever makes the fight, or if my manager makes the fight or whatever, I'm I'm happy to to fight anyone, any of them. It's for me. It's just I'm 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 one of them people. Me, I don't like calling people out. I don't do any of that for me it's whoever's in front of you you fight and you, it's an obstacle you'd overcome if, if I don't think that I can beat people like that then I'm in the wrong game altogether and also for me with all this COVID-19 situation I just want to get a fight I, I don't care who it is I just want to get in the ring 
get back to what I'm doing best. I just think with the shared history, the fact you've sparred, he was the big kind of ERT prospect 10 years ago. He's kind of you 10 years before, you know, and, and obviously you're going to hope to um, go further than he went. And he's obviously gone quite far anyway. But that yeah, kind of touted prospect from the amateurs and, and come up through ERT, I just think, yeah, that would be a really cool fight. Yeah, well, I was speaking about it the other day, to be honest, with one a friend who's close to close to me as well, outside of the boxing, and he was saying because he he knew Ryan as well. I like watched his career when he like won the European title and stuff like that. Mm. And um, he's he's done a lot, and he, he was he, I thought he was a good fighter. He was he still is still is a great fighter. And he's a boss lad as well, and I always had a lot of time for him when I was a kid. He'd always come out of his way and say hello and stuff like that to me, and stuff like that never never leaves me. People like that. The, the friends forever sort of thing but at the end of the day if, if a fight ever does an opportunity ever does come up to fight him I would I would never say no I'd, of course I would It's hard to predict anything with Covid still running rampant across the globe but ideally where would you like to be by the end of this year boxing wise? So my to set me uh, set myself on goals you know boxing yourself you can't really make a plan because it never ever does go the way you want it to uh, for me, it's all about staying healthy, staying active in the gym. But also, I want I want fights this year. I want fights. I don't just want one fight. I want a few. I don't want to have another year where it's like you don't know when your next fight is or you're just ticking away, ticking away in the gym and then nothing sort of happening. Also, I'd like to have a little bit of a confirmation where I have got a contract with a promoter like Francis Warren. I, I want that that security behind me where I have, I'm signed by someone now. I have got a promoter. This is my this is my time to shine, sort of thing. The opportunities that that I want are going to be able to be be happening for me because it is hard with the small hall shows. We 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 get paid and our revenues off ticket sales. Cool. Without the people coming to watch us, we don't fight because the shows can't be put on like that because the promoters lose money from it. So having that big promoter behind you, like Francis Warren, who can afford to push you. That's what you need at this level at the minute. And the way things are with them shows on the telly, they were brilliant then. Like getting the prospects out, pushing them, getting people dates, getting people active. That's We need more of that. But um, as I said, it's it's one of them things, isn't it? It's not, it's not really down to me. I, all I've got to do is make sure I'm staying ready. It's, it's, the, it's the, the other people, the opportunities that come. You've got to make sure you take them with both hands. And the, the nickname, Top Dog, <laughs> who, who gave it to you? Well, how that started, I used to do it in... Like, when I was a baby. But there's a few kids in a gym called Connor. And because I was always in a gym, always on time, always training... The dedication was there since I was six or younger even. And um, I don't know, one day it just come up like top dog means you're the best and stuff like that. And it just sort of got through in then. It just stuck with me all the way through through boxing, really. So you sort know, of, it's, it's a weird, I don't really know where it come from. It just sort of come from, from when I was a kid and just sort of stuck. So you're not sure who exactly at the gym deserves the credit for it, but that's that's the kind of where it came from. Yeah, sort of, because I was a baby when I got when I, when I got like when the title got got made, sort of thing. I was young, and it was through kickboxing originally because of the gym that we bo- we fought for when we were kids. It was called the original Bulldog Gym. So he used to always say, like our old coach Teddy Butwell, he used to always say, "Yeah, it's like a litter of dogs that I've got in the gym when we were babies. There was like six or seven of us, and uh, he used to just basically say, like, you're from the original Bulldog Gym, you're from from the litter." So the, the name sort of come from me then. Believe it or not, my first name was Connor One. Because <laughs> there was two Connors when I was a kid. There was Connor One and Connor Two. And that, that stuck with me for ages. And then to be one, just you're older. Or... I'm not too sure. You know, I think it was because I was there first. And then one of my mates come with me. And then he got the sort of name after me, Connor Two. It was just him. Um, there was no, like, nothing like that behind it. Like, oh, yeah, he's number one and all this. It went, it went all that. It was just a... A number of so we knew who we were, sort of thing. It weren't like because you you'd shout Connor and then everyone would say, "Man, yeah, o- only Connor's allowed." Yeah, 
But I've seen people the way they spell the names. We always like mess about with people who are no record Connor as well and spell the name different. We always have a joke saying, You spell your name wrong. And then he'll say back like, to me, Oh, your name got like a fair name. With one N. Yeah, with the one N, yeah. That's exactly what he says. He says, That's the right way to spell it. Your name's a say name. And I just laugh. <laughs> it's just like one of them things, isn't it? I'm not getting involved. <laughs> I know. Take it aside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, that was actually the runner-up, Connor, for my son. He's called Aiden, but that was the runner-up at the at the names. The second name. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Because when I was a kid, I used to always think like when I was a kid, you, you never like a name, do you? You just sort of, you don't have a choice in the matter, do you? You just get yeah. sort of called it and you're stuck with it forever. Say, I always, always change my name to Charlie or whatever, but <laughs> it's just one of them things, isn't it? All right, now, before I let you go, I know you're going to, interrupt me to do it anyway so i'm going to give you the opportunity and just shut up while you name and credit your sponsors <laughs> so i've got to be honest um with them all this year i just with the with the interviews that i have done this year and like stuff like that i've, I've just tried to throw them out as much as i can because it's been a hard year for everyone on it with this the year that's gone last year 2020 and 2021 with the, the new lockdown and all that it's looking to be the same but if I can get them work or opportunities that can lead to them in and a bit of money and stuff like that, then of course I'm going to do that. So first of all, I've got uh, Molly's Munch is one of my best mates. Yes. Um, Happy is by ours. It's, I'm so it's glad brilliant. Molly's Munch is still there. Yeah, it is. They've got an Instagram page now as well, so I'll be sure to throw that out there. Good yeah, I've also got Merseyside Table and Chairs, a good mate of mine. He does... Um, deliveries for like marquees in the gardens and stuff so when people have parties but at the minute they won't be but he also does like plastic chairs for events and things like that it to be honest all, all of our small little shows he, he he does all the plastic chairs for them so he's uh, he's in on that and then i've also got almonds green services for your mot's they're staying open actually because um people obviously need the cars to get to work and things like that yeah, central service, that's what it is. Got that. I've also got a few people who look after me um, while I'm training. I've got a masseuse called Jane. Everyone around here knows who she is because she's a, a physio. Well, she's not really a physio. She is. She does uh, sports massages and stuff like that. So she takes care of everyone who, who are active and training and pick up them little niggles. She helps us continue with all that I've got here. All of my sponsors are on my um, Instagram as well. But yeah. Uh, they're all on there. I always try and make sure. But this year where it's been quiet, I haven't really been pushing people as much as what I'd like to be. But well, there we go. It's just one of them things, isn't it? <laughs> Good stuff. I hope, I hope this helps them out in some small way. Definitely as well. I hope it does as well because it's hard and you've got to stick by people you know these through these rough times. You've got to make sure people are getting the opportunities that they deserve because without them, I wouldn't be getting the opportunities I deserve. Well, let's hope you get more of those opportunities as we go further into Hopefully. 2021. And, um, Definitely done. We'll be watching with interest and um, hopefully we'll catch up again soon um, towards the middle of the year. 100%. Hopefully I'll have a fight by then. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Definitely, 100%. Cheers, mate. Really appreciate it. All right, then, Dan. Nobody's. See you later, Dan. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.